So this is a wicker chair that has had the misfortune of losing one of its rockers. Um, so I'm going to show you some tricks that you can use uh, in repairing rungs of all different natures on kitchen chairs. There's a couple of choice remedies for a loose rung, or in this case, um, an oft rocker. So I've got my, my selection of colorful party picks. And uh, you don't really have to have the colored ones, but it, it makes it so much more fun to have a color element. OK, so here I have, I'm picking the green ones here because I got a green chair. And it just makes me feel so coordinated to have the green toothpicks. All right, so that ought to do me to start off with. Um, so what I'm going to show you is that the reason this darn uh, rocker fell off in the first place is because um, the hole is just too big. So what we need to do is tighten this rung up so that it will stay on the leg of the chair without, without rocking around and falling off. So there are a couple of things we'll do. First of all, um, if you've got toothpicks, we'll use them to tighten up the fit here. But I'm going to put some glue on them first so that they really bond. And then we'll drive a screw into the leg of the chair to hold the rung on permanently. So let's get started by um, pouring the glue into my smart little styrofoam holder here. Now, carpenter's glue is stronger than white glue, and when you're working with wood especially, it's the glue of choice. So I'll just get a little bit ready to go there in the dish. So what I'm going to do first, after I've poured my glue, I, I store an arsenal of paintbrushes of various different sizes. And that's because when you're repairing stuff, you're always improvising. So it's good to have lots of different sizes of things. And I just want to pick um, a good glue brush. So I'm picking a stiffer bristled brush. And I'm going to dip the brush in the glue and just cover th both the leg and the um, inside hole uh, on the rocker with a thin coating of this carpenter's glue. And I have to do both ends because I got to work on both ends of this rocker. And it was always my understanding that the more glue you used, the stronger the bond would be. And this is a grievous error, grievous, and you should never do that. You should keep it thin. Oop. All right, so there I've got the glue on. So without too much delay, I'll put it on. Now, I'm not going to smack it in yet because I want to drive some of these party picks in to fill up the extra space in the hole. So I'll put, I'll put a couple into this one. And because they're tapered, it's easy to fit them into the hole. See, I don't have much room. So now I can push that on. And then I just need to go work on the back one. All right, now I'm going to take a block of wood and hammer the, um, the runner onto the leg here. If you find that um, this is a bit awkward, and if you find that you're working really slowly and you're worried that your glue is starting to set up, just take another brush and dip it in a little water and um, go over the glue a bit, and that'll retard the curing rate so that you don't end up hammering your rocker onto a completely dry leg. While the glue is setting up, I'm going to drill into the bottom of the rocker and then drive a screw in at the same time. Now, this rocker actually came with pre-drilled um, countersunk holes, but they've never actually had a screw in them. So the screw that I'm going to choose to use is going to match the size of the hole here. So it's, it's going to countersink in, and then when the rocker rocks, there will be no screw head sticking up. 
is called a flat head screw. It has a square hole in the end, and we call that a Robertson head or a square head, or they even call them NASA heads because when they make rockets, they use square head screws. I've chosen um, a drill bit size that matches the core of the screw that I'm using so I can drill successfully. Now, you can see how far I went in. I went in up to where the, um, the screw starts to be sh uh, sheer. And I think that should be deep enough. Now, I can tell by the way the, the screw is spinning in the hole that this wood that the leg is composed of is very porous and loose. So the screw isn't gripping terribly well. In fact, it's just spinning in the hole. So I need to use a carpenter's trick to get that screw to hold better in the wood. I'll be right back. As I drilled into the wood, I realized this wood is extremely porous and almost spongy. And so it, it needs to, I need to do something to create a denser, material for this screw to come into. So two things I have to do. The first thing is I have to take out the screw. So what I'm going to do is put contrasting yellow party picks into the hole that I just drilled. And these are made of quite tough wood and so they will um, take up the threads of the screw in a much more direct and proactive way than what I was getting before. So I'm going to try even driving two of these in with glue on them. The second one isn't going to go as far, obviously. And then break it off. This one might be a little harder to break off, so I'm just going to give it a whack. There we go. Now, remember I showed you the head of the screw. I don't, I, there are no threads in this top half inch, so I'm going to just drill again the top half inch out so that this part won't have trouble going into that hard wood. And I'm, I'm going to brush that off right away because I don't want the carpenter's glue to set up in the threads of the drill bit. All right, and then the next thing I need to do, whoops, is take care of the fact that this hole is a little bit too small for the head of the screw. So to do that, I get up my trusty drill index. You, you see, you start fixing stuff around your house, and other people pick up on it, and they start fixing stuff too. Here's my drill index, and then I'm going to take the head of my screw and find a, a bit size that will drill out a hole that's big enough for this head. All right, so we begin again. a lot better that time. All right, now, back to the toothpicks at the front. I'm just going to use my utility knife to score them and break them off, and then we'll sit the chair up. I'm actually going to do this other end first. We'll sit the chair up and put a weight on it so that it can, so the glue can set up. I think we've had just about enough of this repair. <laughs> I think I'll actually now put a little bit of weight on the seat of the rocking chair 
and about 115 pounds of it, so I'll just go sit in it for a while, and that way I'll be sure I get a really good seal on my repair.